Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to uh, Wednesday's Talking Town. I'm your host, The Gov, looking forward to discussing a signing. That's right, the 3rd of January, uh, new signing confirmed today, on loan from Brighton, Jeremy Sarmiento, previously at West Brom. So we have a West Brom fan coming on, Chris Hall, who's been on the platform before, so that's all we need to know about the player. Um, we welcome your thoughts, as always, in the live chat. There'll be a link to come on and have your say, and we'll also briefly look ahead to the FA Cup third round, which is coming up this weekend as we take on AFC Wimbledon. 12.30 kickoff. Um, I'm not sure if it's on TV anywhere or not. It might have been picked up on the, uh, picked up by the stateside TV. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure somebody in the chat uh, will tell me. Paul Smith kicks us off by saying, good evening, all town fans. Good first signing. About two or three more of similar quality or better. And then those turns around us can worry about us. Great first comment. Thanks for it, Paul. As always, hit the like button, subscribe. And if you're watching on Catch Up, Three little words. FTA, comment for the algorithm. As I get into the show, we'll kick things off uh, by saying we are partnered with Match Bingo. Play Match Bingo, win cash prizes. I'll say that again. Play Match Bingo, win cash prizes. Are you a sports enthusiast who just loves football and cricket? And do you want to support the life-saving work while having fun and winning cash prizes? Look no further. Match Bingo is the ultimate interactive game. That lets you play alongside live football and cricket matches while raising funds for the East Anglian Air Ambulance. How you play is on the screen right now. Bingo cards are two pounds. I have won a um, little bit of cash so far. Not as much as I would like, I'll be honest, but I have won a little bit of cash, which is always good. There's also a free game called Free Bing Goals. Um, do check that out. But how you play is on the screen and you support the great work of the East Anglian Air Ambulance over 18s. Be gamble aware. Get a couple more comments. Uh, Stephen Parry, nice to see you. Stephen, hope you're well. Nice to have made an early signing, another two or three, and we'll be cooking. Yeah, love that, Steve. Absolutely. Um, it is on TV, says Colin. There you go. Colin Plum coming up trumps, as always. Um, and Colin says, I was speaking to an ex-professional footballer today who rates our new signing. Uh, Chris McTaggart, new YouTube member. Chris, thank you very much. If you head to the community tab on your YouTube page, there will be a link to Discord because all of our YouTube members and our Ko-Fi fifth standards, that's those who click the link to go to Ko-Fi and sign themselves up for $4.99, cancel at any point get access to our 24-7-365 Discord, where you can talk about all things in the world, really, but mostly Ipswich Town. There's been several names flying all over the place on the Discord over the last couple of weeks, um, and I'm sure it's been very busy today discussing our new signings. So if you wish to follow Chris's great lead, hit the join button on YouTube or head to Ko-Fi, 4 99 cancel at any point. Connor says, excited to see uh, McKenna getting ahead of things and already signing young talent. Big Slow Blues, evening all, and so it begins. It certainly does. And joining me as we go through the next however long is the man, the myth, the absolute legend, the milk train man, Ben Adams. Ben, how are you? Very well, thank you, my friend. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Yes, it's been a while Good. since we sat down and discussed our wonderful football team. And it it's been a fantastic 2023, really, isn't it? It has. It's been a very good 2023. A little bit of a wobble at the end, maybe. But do you know what? Um, if you offered me what we are, where we are and how we are at the beginning of this season, I would have feasted on your arm and taken the rest of you with me. We are in a comparative dreamland to the years gone by. And I'm excited to see what this transfer window comes. I think it couldn't have come at a better time. <clears throat> and I'm um, excited. Good. Mm, absolutely yeah i think i was just thinking as you were talking there if we jumped back to this time last year i wonder what the sort of mood would have been the conversations would have been probably very much you know what can the window deliver to get us um many fans would have, would have probably thought uh, a playoff win i agree i mean don't going back a year right now we were at the precipice of the 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 run that a team achieves every, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. So we, we were right at the beginning of something special. And, and I think, you know, transfer windows, we strengthened last year and it really helped us. And we need to strengthen this year for very different reasons, I think. And, and it's mm. more, I, th I think the targets would have changed because of the injuries and the illness and the international call-ups. Um, it, you know, it, it's one of the things that these huge teams have unbelievable depth in squads. Leeds, Leeds have a hundred million pounds worth of talent out on loan, not not in their squad. Really? Yeah, I've, I've read this from the EFL Twitter thing today. A hundred million pounds of talent on loan to other clubs, and it looks about the, what other teams are bidding for them. Um, so you're thinking, you know, they they can chop and change. We we 
we came in as the shock team of the championship. Nobody knew how to deal with us. But now we're at a time where we've been chipped away at the edges, injuries and all the rest of it. So this mm. transfer window is absolutely vital. It's, it's, it could be the second most important one of the last 20 years, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, George Hurst going down uh, with yeah, the, the big yeah. injury. That's going to be a big blow, that isn't it? Before we get into obviously the new signing, that's going to be a big. That's going to be a big. Yeah, big look, I, I was. I text Cruncher on the last match. It said, if anyone ever questions why the players who start start each game reference the last um, the last home game, because Hurst is the the linchpin of how we play that entire game. Everything is directed up to him and his hold up play. If you take that away, then um, you have the you have a, you have Ladapo and Jackson, and so you have Jackson, a runner who's not a footballer, or you have or you have Ladapo who's a footballer but not a runner. So we're slim pickings when you take away the man that was brought in to do a job that the rest of the team actually builds towards. And mm-hmm. boy, do we miss him! Boy, boy, yes. boy. Yes. Feel sorry for him. Far. Yeah. Feel sorry for him. Because he was just starting to get a bit of momentum going in the championship, yeah. having, you know, yeah. spotted a little bit of Blackburn. <clears throat> it, it, yeah, absolutely. I'm a big George O's fan. Everyone knows oh, that. Sure. Good, good evening, Alex. Hope you're well. Paul P's here. Good evening. Stephen Price says, Kiefer Moore on Discord recently. I don't think he actually means Kiefer Moore as a YouTube member that's been on Discord recently. I think he means that's a name that's been mentioned. Would you entertain a, a Kiefer Moore return? I would entertain any return that Kieran McKenna trusts. <laughs> it's interesting. On, on the Twitter, they're doing random from years gone by, the last five years, random announcements from Ipswich. Like, oh God, I can't remember the name was. He was played about 80 minutes of football and went back Gordon someone in about five years ago. And you think, my God, these players, Drinan, so all these different players, thinking these these people we were linked with, you're thinking, oh. Drinan. But now, you know, Kiefer Moore really kicked on in his career. If Kieran trusts him, I trust him. <clears throat> and, a, and a bit like the signing we signed today. It, would, it came a bit out of left, left field. Like a lot of people, I was expecting a certain Fulham striker, but actually this one came out well, quite literally, actually at left field. That's where he plays. I don't know mm. anything about him. Okay, um, but uh, I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll find out throughout the show and, and speak to I your. your well. way. But yes. if, if, look, if if I trust a manager more than any manager I've ever trusted, apart from probably Burley and Joe Royal, uh, okay. if he says it's good enough, fair enough for me. That's good. Right? And I think many fans sitting at home will be, will, will, you know, will be nodding their head in absolute agreement with you. Now, Kiefer Moore, I would entertain as an option. Yeah. I don't see him as a George Hurst replacement. I don't mm-hmm. think he's like for like George Hurst. Different player. Different player. I'd absolutely be well up for a Kiefer Moore off the bench when you need a goal or to, you know, to either get the game back or to win the game. I think he's got that sort of ability I- about him. I, th- I think when we're speculating about what players, and it's all going to be happening in the next week, <clears throat> I think the question is one that came up again in the season. What are the ambitions of the season? Because if the ambition is to get promoted to the Premier League, if they go full pelt in this transfer window, you're buying players for the Premier League, not the Championship. Mm. So mm. actually, the quality of players, it needs to be quite astounding. Rather than a strong Championship squad, I would argue you're actually buying for the potential of going to the Premier League. In the same way that in League One, we bought Championship players... And, and the rising tides hit the championship. So what players do we have to sign if our ambitions are the Premier League or if this is a consolidation season? Because no one has actually answered that question yet and it's never been posed. And, you know, uh, Radio Suffolk are never going to ask a hard question. So we're all but wondering. We're, well, this, yes. Um, Fix their blues. How, what, how would you answer that question if you were posing it? You know, what, what do you expect the answer to be? What the when ambition you, is? The, yeah, the one you've just asked. The one you've just asked. Oh, I'm um, top six. Yeah, there, there, there's no way we're we're going to stay top two for us this season. Um, we've, Do you not think? No, absolutely no. There's too many teams just coming into it too strong. Southampton leads are inconsistent, but they'll be close. Leicester have already won the league, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the, the depth of squad always tells, which is why this is a very intriguing window. But I, I just think that for the first third of the season, the one thing we had was the shock value. And now you see teams set up a different way for us. And very effectively, I, I just think in the end, as much as I would, God, what I wouldn't give to go up this year, what I wouldn't give, I oh. would sacrifice things in my life to go up this year. But on a long enough time scale, mm, I don't know. Yeah, it'll be a shock. It'll be lovely, but I don't think so. But hey, 
Um, I, okay. I just don't want to be playing Leeds in the playoffs. Jesus Christ. I, I, I actually eight eight, eight goals else. is enough for one half of a season. Yes. Wait, thanks. Well, funnily enough, the players have a different, a, a, a different, totally different kettle of fish. But I, I mm. think we'll have enough about us. But um, we've got, I'll, I'll run through some comments. Uh, we've got uh, Fixed mm. and Boost. Hopefully, this international star can beat the first man with his crosses. JTB, very <laughs> happy with January so far. Here's a two or three more signings. Uh, James, <coughs> I'm encouraged to see the club showing ambition. Charlie says, even in Gulf, happy with the signing, but why does that be a loan deal? That's the way it is. You don't get uh, promising developing. Yeah, talent. we don't. Di- we we don't have the power to dictate the market. The market dictates us. No. Uh, fix hundred mil- chance- million in the bank. You don't. Ha- you don't have to put up with loans. We don't have that. No, fix their blue Jackson. We, we've probably got the money in the bank. It's just whether you can attract how much the, a player who he's a, an ascending player that Brian have got a lot of ambition on. Yeah, yeah. He isn't, gonna, right. he isn't, he isn't gonna be stepping down, you know, on a permanent fix their blue yeah. Jackson and Kiefer would work well as compliments. Paul P. McKenna's coaching has made a lot of clubs sit up and take notice. We can attract players at a completely different level now. Uh, JTB outgoing. I've heard in the grapevine that Leaf favors of interest in Borussia Dortmund, uh, full of potentially this summer. Mm. Um, and that, and that, in that, actually, is speaks to a very interesting point, which is, is, is there? This is what this transfer window is going to tell. You. It's going to tell you exactly what the owners want from this football club this year. Because if we don't, I think Crunch has raised this a few times, and Matt has done as well. If we don't go up this year, there will be people coming in for our best players, and who knows? Even them, even Kieran McKenna himself, Crystal Palace coming and say, right, he's eighty grand a week. Here's a four year contract. Do you want to come try at the Premier mm. League? I mean, look, without being funny, why the hell wouldn't you? So maybe there's a bit of a time issue on this year. It must be this year. But this transfer window will tell you the answer to that previous question without actually asking it. Yeah. All right. Uh, apparently, some people are watching us or, or waiting for us in another stream. I don't know. I don't think I've set another stream up. But um, welcome in those that have joined us late on. We're about to discuss uh, the arrival of winger Jeremy Sarmiento on loan. He, was, he has spent time on loan at West Brom already this season seven starts out of possible 22 goals two big chances created 78 percent accurate passes ben doesn't know a lot about the player um i have dropped the link which i will do so again for you to come on and have your say in your own words uh in regards to the signing but first of all I, oh sorry go on, on. No, go on. i was gonna say can i tell you what i've read because i've done a lot of deep diving you tell me and then we'll show. get the We'll this, 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 is going on, this is going on the Facebook, the Twitter, all the socials. I never usually touch too much about what West Brom um, fans think of him. Uh, and in my brain, he, he to them is a bit like Selena to us. They know he can turn it on and do a piece of magic. He's front footed. He can be aggressive. He's good with his feet. But the thing I kept hearing across the board is not a team player. So you, you can argue a for and against for any player underneath the very highest levels. We can do it with our players. Uh, Wes Burns, great runner, great positional wearing, can't can't cross a ball. Chaplin, best player we've had in years, goes missing every few games. Mm-hmm. Um, Hurst, amazing hold-up player, makes the system work, doesn't score enough goal. At this level, there's always a plus and a minus. That is, oh, here we go. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. We're oh, anyway. My thing went back. So the, the minus to him seems to be not a team player, doesn't work well in a system. Right but can produce moments of magic. So I'd be really interested to see what the what the guy says. Perfect. You've taken that from social media, which, you know, I'll, you, you, yeah, I'm glad you sent it with a warning, first of all, about how you've taken it from social media and how to not to... So, so, well, it's, we, we all have our views on social media. We but, certainly but there are some really good, pod, really good little groups where people just discuss football. And I've been reading what people have said about him. And it's been really... Tooth- mm-hmm. People love him. Shame we couldn't keep developing him. Not going to miss him. So okay. a bit of a 50-50. Well, sadly, joining us now from not from one of those good pockets of social media <laughs> spaces is Chris Hall from Albion Analytics. Chris, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I Hi, couldn't Chris. resist the little, the little not from the good pockets. How are you? No, no, not at all, mate. I, no, I noticed you're not playing the Coventry clip to, tonight. Um, you you no. started to realise you were wrong on that one, Gov. I yeah yeah maybe. Oh, maybe. I mean you know not, not getting not getting foggy there? about Coventry's league position now. They've flown up the league table. I was hoping you'd forgotten about that, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd forgotten about it. Are you well, first of all, Chris? I'm very good, mate. Yeah, n- and not bad. How are you? Happy Happy New Year and um, a, a belated uh, Merry Christmas to uh, to you and all your listeners as well. Thank you ever so much. Um, so, obviously, we've signed Jeremy Sarmiento uh, on loan. He's yep. been on loan at West Brom, a club very dear to your heart, a club that you <laughs> spend countless hours analysing. So, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you're going to tell us about our future promotion winner 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, th- I think I think Ben has said a bit of it there. He's he's something of an enigma. There's no two ways about that. Um, he, I mean, we 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 took Jeremy Sarmiento um, knowing that the only reason we got him in the summer was because he'd basically spent most of the previous year out injured. So um, it, it, Brighton wanted to send him to us to recover. From um, uh, from from his injury, get his get his form, get his fitness back. Mm. Um, you know, get some games into him. Unfortunately for for Sarmiento, he got injured very early on. Again, um, he, he he started the season making a few cameos off the bench, and then got injured and, and missed a few games. At which point, we by the time he came back, we'd already hit some some real uh, some real form, and. To be honest, we'd kind of we'd fallen into a bit of a bit of a decent shape in terms of Swift through the middle, Wallace off the right, uh, mm-hmm. Dean Garner uh, on the left, and he struggled to really break in uh, break into the side in some meaningful way. The, the odd thing is the point at which uh, Brighton have taken him back and um, uh, and uh, and actually um, uh, and actually reloaned him is the point at which I think he's started six of the last seven games. So the complaint about him him not starting games is was valid earlier in the season is not as valid now. And obviously Grady Dean Garner has just gone off to the African Cup of Nations as well. <clears throat> so he actually would have started quite a lot of games for us. In terms of whether he's a good fit for us or not. I'm not sure. Um, he does. He does. He's. He plays for himself. He's. He can be a thoroughly spectacular player at at, um, at times. If if any if anybody hasn't seen the goal he scored <laughs> away at Cardiff, take a yeah. look at it. It's it, it's a heck of a goal. Um, and he, that is him in a nutshell. Really plays off the left, but f- heavily right footed. You you said about uh, it's all one of your comments said. Um, let's see if he can complete any crosses. See if he makes any. Like it, it, he doesn't, he doesn't go down the line on that. Le- he, I mean, he doesn't he use in, his left foot at all. Yeah, he cuts in. He, yeah. he for us, he played, and, and from the clips I've seen of him at Brighton, he plays off the left, coming mm. back in on that right foot, and basically whipping, uh, whipping in shots. He, he's he's certainly not shy about uh, about shooting by any stretch of the imagination. Um, he's, I think it is fair to say he. he I think he got better at playing for the team and certainly doing the kind of roles that Corbram was asking of him. Corbram wanted him tracking back. He wanted him defending. He he wanted him doing the hard yards and he was doing more of that. Was he doing it to the level that we want? No. Um, and yeah, he he does play for himself. He, he plays in flashes. Uh, look, mm-hmm. he's he's the kind of guy who's going to come on and win you a game somewhere down the line because yeah. that's what he is. I mean, he he's 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 quite well, tall. He's rangy. He's incredibly hard to knock off the ball. He kind of he rides challenges when you think he must go down. Um, so he's got he's got all that ability. It's just. He's going to frustrate the hell out of you, basically. Is, is, is what, he, it, it, it's one but of the question is, is he coachable? And it kind of says that he is to a certain degree with the system you're working. And I would say, interestingly, that West Bromwich, and certainly when we played them, were the best unit team we've played mm. front Ooh, to back. Gone. He's gone. Uh, oh, gone. You here? Yeah, you're back. He's yeah, back. You're back. He's back. Yeah, they're, the, they're the best unit of team we've played, the most organised, most mm. brilliantly defensive. So it makes sense you say that if he's a flair player, an individual player, it's very hard to break into a team where it was truly all 11 of you working as a single unit. Yeah. So uh, so the question is, is it switch more of a team that can facilitate a flair player? Yeah. I'd, I'd, yes, well, I'd say team. you are. I mean, you, you've got you've got a bit more you've got a bit more freedom from the way you play. I mean, I've only, I can only really go on the obviously the the only time I've really sat down and intensely watched you for ninety minutes is is against us, and I didn't mm. see you asking your 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 wingers to get back and no. support the fullbacks in in that system, which is going to suit Sarmiento. Um, he's it also you, you obviously like your wide players to drift inside. Wes Burns yeah. does that an awful lot, um, mm. so uh, I can see why you want that option. On the other side, it's going it's going to give you a bit more balance to the way you attack. Because certainly, what I saw against us again, just going off that one game, you were quite heavy on the right hand side in terms oh, of yeah. Yeah, how, yeah. how you attacked us, and and I think it will give you give you more balance on that. It's just 
there's there's going to be a goal that's going to come from your left hand side, which is going to be from a fullback overlapping, and you're going to be going, "Where's Sarmiento?" And he's probably going to be standing with his hands on his hips on the halfway line. So <laughs> you know, it's the Lord give and the Lord take the weight. But Brighton rated him immensely highly. Like yeah. they 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 really they did they have they they honestly believe he's one of the next ones off the production line. I mean, you know, they they let these players out for a sh- for a short time and then suddenly you start seeing them in the Premier League whether it's Matoma, whether it's uh, this year a Dingram players like players like that, Buonanotte, all these kind of guys. They honestly believe that he will be he will be that for them. He he will he will get into their side and and from what I heard I, that when we took him in the summer there was a genuine belief at Brighton that he would already be in and around the squad if he hadn't had that lengthy injury. So I th- I think they really really believe in him. Um and I think I, I think he will improve you. I just to be honest with Hutchinson in there I don't really see you know wh- why why you why you sort of um, need the both of them, and the other problem that you've got is you must Point. have made promises Point. to Brighton yeah. that he will start a lot of games because he's he's been taken back off us because he's not started enough games, as you say, seven starts, although slightly mitigated by the fact that he did have an injury for a few yeah. weeks, but 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 nonetheless, seven starts, and most of them have come in uh, have come in the last sort of um, half a dozen games, so. He, he, yeah, I mean, and when when Dean Garner came back, comes back from the African Nations, would he have probably got bumped back down to the bench again? Yeah, probably. So, but but he he's not been sent to town to sit on the bench because if 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 that's your plan, they wouldn't have given him you. So McKenna's made promises in terms of game time. He must have done because, as I say, if he's going to sit on the bench at town he might as well sit on the bench at the Albion and at least play the next month with where Dean Garner's in in the African Cup of Nations um so you <clears> must <throat> be making promises that he's going to start if, if there's a general question I could ask mm-hmm. are you sad to see him go in terms of him no yeah. um in terms of our current options he's we've we're so thin so okay. Okay. if if we replace him and I mean, you know, there's there's a mad one doing the rounds that the, uh, today that that we're that we're in for um, the, the lad Santos from um, uh, from Chelsea who's just got taken back off Nottingham Forest. Oh, I mean, right. I personally can't see that for the life of me. That seems hugely ambitious. But if we were to go and get a player like that, uh, you know, somebody else on loan from from a, from a Premier League yeah. club who is more suited to what what we do or even if we even if even if we just sort of didn't really replace Sarmiento gave more game time to Tom Fellows and kind of went and got a number 9 with that loan slot mm-hmm. um and and potentially use Brandon Thomas Asante as well sometimes in some of the wide areas I wouldn't cry any tears over losing Sarmiento sure. equally I'm well aware that a bit like every now and then with Taylor Gardner Hickman, he pops up on a on on a on a clip clip that's just doing the rounds on on Twitter because he scored a worldie. I've no doubt Sarmiento will be that guy that Town yeah. fans are just sharing this clip of him cutting inside and purling one in the top corner. Yeah, at, at times, but I'm not going to lose sleep over that because he did that for uh, for us against Cardiff and he smashed one in against Borough. But then. When I look at what he's done in between those games, it's mm. not a lot. I, but he's just, not been helped by injuries, is he? Either Chris, you know, it's, it's, it's not, seven starts, twenty games. I mean, not not at the start of the season, mate. Been... But he, but but he has had a run in the team the last mm. few weeks. Like I say, six of the last seven, I think it is. He started, and and beyond Cardiff, I can't, I can't honestly tell you that much. He's he's done in he's done in those games, and he came he came out the side um, against against Leeds, and suddenly we look okay. just way better unit for it. Do you feel that's Corbrand's tactical structure? Do you think it, because obviously Corbrand's a very, um, I, I want to say rigid, but he's very much defensively. Once you take that lead, we saw it ourselves as town fans. You know, mm. it's very much cool, uh, yeah. do your job, <laughs> we tuck in. Whereas it was just town, one of our biggest issues this year is conceding goals. And that is because we do not want all those players behind the ball. We will keep our four attacking players up over the halfway line, whether we're winning, losing, or drawing. Do you feel that that will? suit Sarmiento's play set more when he's not asked to do as much defending when he's just asked to get on the ball and be this promising player that Brighton firmly believe he is 
Probably, but then at the same time, you've got to you've got to realise that he, as I say, he has played six of the last seven, and he has been able to go and actually do uh, do bits in those games. It's just his decision making at times lets him down. You know, as as I say, he's uh, and the other thing is, if the opposition have done their, their their homework on him a little bit, they know they can show him the line because he's never ever going to go for it. Mm, he's always okay. coming inside. So I mean, he's he's one of, he's one of those. It's like. <laughs> Your fullback just does not get goal side. He just basically goes right. I'm I'm going to defend the cutback, and if and if you want to go for the line, you go for the line. But I know you don't want to use your left foot. I know sure, you don't sure. want to get to the line. You don't want to cross mm. it. You don't want to pull it back. Like you know, the, the, this, uh, to give you to to give you flashbacks, there's a little bit of uh, the, the, it like to to a player that you did take from us in the lower leagues. It, Carl Edwards is like a lower league Sarmiento a little bit. You know what I mean? You know what he's going to. I do. like Carl Edwards. So I'm I, quite happy I, with that. I, I love Kyle as well. Re- really, really, really good player. player. But he was predictable. He was predictable. And and Sarmiento is too. Sarmiento has got unreal ability. I'm not. I'm not denying mm. that for one mm. second. I think he will do well at well at town. But he will be also. He will also be one of those players where you will have games when you'll come in at half time and and you'll you'll sort of like you'll, you'll go for your half time pint and you'll go. Is Sarmiento even playing? Like, so you're very your traditional loan player, where it's it, the, it, the you're there to develop them, and the development is always like that. And he's, one week he, it's eight out of ten, the next week you'll say, "Is he is he playing? Is he even?" He, on the he just drifts in and out of games, yeah. Gov. But but at the same time, like he did for us away at Cardiff, he he, he let, let me make it clear for 85, 86 minutes he did not have a good game at Cardiff, but. For the two three minutes that he really really turned it on, he won us the game. He cut I'll inside, scored I'll the take world. That. I'll take that. I'll take and that, Chris. I'll take I, that every day of the week, mate. We've got two geez. points out of six. <laughs> After last well, if, you th- if you think I'm listening to your analysis of him, and it's very much reminded me of Hutchinson, but it sounds like Hutchinson was actually, ironically, is slightly more of an end product hmm. because Hutchinson yeah. never goes to the byline. He always cuts inside and mm-hmm. um, just stabs the ball in. I, I just he sounds like a very similar player actually, but maybe that's the. That's the game plan because I, I think we've bought him for the strikers we have lined up. Perhaps, maybe it's possible. One last question for you, Chris. Before I let you go, I'm sure you're probably a darts fan. Go, uh, anybody else go and watch? Um, I mean, I, I wasn't before the before this Luke Littler story, and but yeah, it, you've, got, you've got you've got to watch it, haven't you? I mean, it's just no. it, the 16 year old is could win the world darts championship. Crying yeah. out loud, it, madness! It, it, it's absolutely. Although, although I have to say, he's the least 16 year looking 16 year old I've ever seen in my entire life. But oh, yeah, no. he's affinity George looking. 16. 16 year old is what he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to absolutely. give you a West Brom version Carnu. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, Chris, I've got a question from Phil. Uh, do you feel the coaching staff helped <coughs> with Sarmiento? Do you, do you feel that Sarmiento's confidence, talent improved at West Brom? Last question for you there, Chris. Um, I mean, it's hard It's hard really to uh, to answer the second part because because I didn't see that much of him before he came to the club. So it, 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 it it's tricky. Mm-hmm. I think, I think he's, I think he's a, better all-round player i think he can defend he 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 did support townsend when, when he came on at, when he came on, uh, on away at blackburn on the opening day he looked like he was all flair but an absolute liability going the other way he did he he did develop a little bit of the other side of his game whilst under corbrand now whether Without Corbran screaming in his <coughs> ear from the uh, from, from the near side touchline to get back and support his fullback, if McKenna doesn't do that, and ha- like I say, having seen you play, I don't think McKenna does do that. Um, no. Whether that will go out the window and Sarmiento will just go out there and express himself, but as I say, offer you absolutely nothing the other way, I don't know. But he certainly can do the defensive side of it um, now. I don't think his confidence improved. No, because uh, b- because he he just he never really got started. I think I think that injury he had right at the start with us absolutely killed him because yeah. he, he came on against Middlesbrough, scored a cracking goal to make it make it four two, and I think everybody thought here we go with Jeremy Sarmiento, here we go, and then and then like it was just a matter of a week or so after that he he got injured and and was missing for about four weeks and. I just think that that killed him, and after that, as you say, we we'd become this unit where "thou shalt not pass" was kind of the mantra, and I just don't think he ever quite fit into that. But I think he'll fit in much much better at you guys. But you he will split your fan base because he did ours. There's there was people who were screaming. 
give give me more Jeremy Sarmiento. Put him. Uh, uh, put it. Put, I mean, that's not a very confident comment, by the way, that you're ending up in the playoffs. Yeah. But um, uh, it, it, it's it, like it, a little dig there from Hearts. We are. That's exactly. Well, it's it's a dig at yourselves, really, isn't it? You're second in the league, and you're predicting well, 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 welcome playoff to semi-final. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not brilliant. Um, but but no, I mean, he, he's come on, Harps. Better side down there, Harps. Come on, the he's, he has. He's let you down there a little bit. He's trying to have a dig at me, and he's absolutely stitched himself up. But, um, <laughs> But, uh, but no, I mean, like he's he split our fan base. There was some fans that were saying, "Why doesn't he get given more game <coughs> time?" Because at yeah. times he could be phenomenal to watch. And then there was other fans going because he doesn't do enough for the team. And genuinely, we'd rather have less spectacular but more reliable players in in the side. I think he will split the town fan base like that. But I think you will ha- where we probably had more fans who were on the side of. We'll stick with our reliable players. Thank you very much because of the kind of side we are. I think because of the kind of side you are, you will have more fans who are give me more of this guy. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, I think you 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 ones who want more reliable options in that position will be probably more in the minority. Whereas I would say ours were in the majority because okay. well that's how we play. Perfect, perfect, Chris. You've been a star as always, most opinionated man in world football. <laughs> yeah, Love thanks, it. Man. Love having you on, Chris. Look after yourself, all right? My pleasure. See you in a few weeks, guys. We'll see you in a few weeks. Get it in the diary, son. Look after yourself. Harps, you let us down towards you. No, I'm joking, Harps. Thanks for the comment. (laughs) Um, Marvin says, uh, Samiento sounds like a super sub, a luxury player. Um, Interesting thoughts there. Don't forget, we are partnered with Stone Market Osteopaths. I go there myself. That's why I promote it, because I absolutely love the service. Phone up 01449613633 and tell Freddie, who owns the gaff, the gov sent you and he'll sort you out. Well, I might just do that. Ben, ben, ben down 150 times a day to pick up a one year old. I, I tell you what, I, I might just give Freddie a call. Thank you. Yes. Because I, I'm, and then I'm they get bigger stuck. and they weigh a ton. And it's oh. like, oh, oh God. Yeah. I'm absolutely. Too much. <laughs> yeah. I've got, honestly, I've got Freddie on speed though. Go on with speed though. I get the, the, <laughs> the slightest twinge in my neck, on my back, on my arm, or a headache. Yeah. Bang. Straight to Freddie, I go. He sorts me out. So 01449 613 Stone Market Osteopaths. Uh, and he says, sounds like can produce the moment missing lately. Which it did. It, that's what I was really gleaming. <coughs> I know how Corbrand likes to see, you know, sort of set his structure up at West Brom. Very, I would say, different to a Kieran McKenna. It's, it's a totally different, as I said, they're, they're like the, the 300, the Spartans. The, the, it's lines of shields and spears mm. moving forward as one unit. Um, and flair players never really last in a team that sets up like that. Although, you know, I think you raise a really good point, which is we are not West Brom. We are more gun ho You know, we're going to score more goals than you. Well, unless it's the last two games. But generally speaking, we have more room in our way of playing for a flair player. So it might be a slight more match. But I, w- I would argue, I think we've signed Selena again. And so I, 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 that, that wouldn't be a bad thing, though, would it? it? It depends on your thing. Everything he said about this, our new signing, the Ipswich fan base said about Selena, bring him on. We need more of him. Or no, he's not good enough. It's just moments of brilliance. Uh, and, and that's it. So it sounds like a very similar kind of player that will divide the fan base. But Possibly. you know what? In Kieran, we trust, and he knows more than I bloody know. Well, so. that, well that 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 goes without saying. I mean, that could be the title of every single show in the world, really, couldn't it? Sure. In McKenna, sure. we trust, win, lose, or draw. But I'm actually quite excited by it because I've been crying out for game changers off the bench. And one thing I sort of took away from Chris there was that he will produce that bit of magic. Yeah. We've not had that recently. You I read a lot. You, you, you need more than Amari Hutchinson. Like, like this season, being a fantastic mm-hmm. season. <clears throat> when we've needed a bit of magic, we've tended to turn to two players. And then correct me if I'm wrong, people in the chat, Ben. Marcus Harness and Amari Hutchinson. And you kind of need more than that off the bench. You need more than just two players because not every player can be bang on it. Marcus Harness, every... that's, that's an interesting perspective. Well, we, we would have got a point at Birmingham without Marcus Harness. Um, mm. And Birmingham have been an absolute horror show. Um, but, but, but Hutchinson, again, I, I think in another year, I think he's going to be a really good little player. But it, maybe it sounds a bit like... You know, this I'm gonna it's gonna take uh, Sa, Samiento, right? I'm gonna say it once to remember Samiento, right? Samiento, Samiento. I say yeah. Samiento, but I don't also pronounce John Smith well, so I mean, no, that's not right. Samiento sounds like a similar to um, Hutchinson, a lot of sparkle, a lot of glitz and glamour, but you bring it on for a sub when you want a bit of magic, and hopefully something good comes up. But does he improve that first 11? And I'm wondering, I don't think he needs to. 
Uh, really? I, I, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, well, does he improve that? Well, off the, off the basis of the stats, no. <clears throat> but I don't know if it means to. I think you know. Um, where, where was where was the comment? Uh, Harps. I take moments are brilliant. Needle moves, as the gov says. Our bench has just got stronger, and I'm not referring to to, to Jeremy being on it. I'm not quite sure what the last bit. I don't know if I've missed the joke there. I've gone whoosh over my head. Um, we'll, yeah, my head too. We'll, we'll move on. Paul P. He's half seven. Half seven. You're on an awful night tonight. Uh, he's playing the World Cup, so that's not a bad CV right there. Very true. Very true. People have been saying for a while, you know, let's bring some um, international talent to the team. Well, they've done that. There you go. Well, that's, yeah. that's true. But, you know, we, we've, we've got we've got a Chanzebi. He, he's played in the Champions League, Marking and Beppe. And, and he, he is he's divided the fan base as well. So pedigree is pedigree, but pedigree is not everything because it depends what system you bring that pedigree into. So, but, you know, let's see it work. Let's see it unfold. The, the players we had on the bench in the last game, we, we were bringing in players from the youth team who couldn't play more than five minutes. That, that That's like Colchester level subs. Um, so, so we're suffering. So this will strengthen what we have. I Spot. just want, I just want this. As I said, you want to know what the owners think. Watch the next two weeks. You'll know exactly what they want to do with the club. We need to bring in people. I think who will strengthen the first eleven, not the twenty-five. Um, but there's there's room for both. So let's see what happens. Absolutely. Sure. So it's bringing touched off the bench. Chase and nothing needed impact subs. To hope new will give us fucking this. right. If this pushes Jackson out from this side, who is a, I, I like, argue, him, he, I, I, do, I would argue he's not good enough for our current ambitions. Um, then fair enough. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Right, we'll bring Phil Blundell in. Phil, have this chance to have your say. What are you hey, thinking Phil? this evening? Yeah, I'm say uh, just a mixture of thoughts, really. I'm saying, uh, you know, perfect. there's there's been a number of very good, valid points there about this this new signing. Um, I, I'm going to start by saying that I I, I disagree with. Ben's, I think, first comment about finishing the playoffs. Look, I think you've probably listened and seen what I've said over the last few weeks. I would say, for me, it's the top two or bust, mate. I, I really do think. I really do think. Yeah, we'll I, I, the top I think two. We're in for a very long 2024. I'm afraid. As, <laughs> much, as much as I, I bleed this club. I've, I've, I love this club like you do. Yeah. But, um, it will be one hell of an ask to do top two. But do you know what? It'd be marvelous. It'd be Let's marvelous see. Did, yeah. it's top Let's two or bust. So yeah, I would say I, I have confidence in McKenna. I, I, I think mm -hmm. for me, he's the magic one. He's the magic McKenna. He's the oh, magic man that we've mm. been, you the know, magic. crying out for for the God knows how many, you know, yeah, yeah. that's 10 or so. Listen, but anyway, that, you know, if, my, if that's if that's just listening, magic man, magic McKenna. Magic I mean, McKenna, this is, yeah. This is right in itself. Go on, Phil. Sorry. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that we've managed to get the first signing through the door for, you know, of the January transfer window. You know, I'm pleased that he comes with a bit of Premier League pedigree and obviously the World Cup on his CV. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously an actual replacement for Dane Scarlett, although when I first heard about this the other day, there was one or two questions that immediately popped into my mind is that to me, I mean, so I agree mostly with what's been said about the fact that, you know, he's going to be an impact player. What's his end product? Does he have confidence? Does he have the ability? Is he good enough? Is, uh, you know, does he have goals in him? You know, is he good enough with his left foot, et cetera, et cetera. I think for me, the probably the first one is, is that it does smack as though that he's come here to get game time. And he's already played in 19 games for West Brom this season. So that was a bit of a head scratcher for me because, mm. you know, he's, he, he'll need to fit in with what McKenna wants. And, you know, McKenna rotates. So, you know, he's, he's not going <clears> to <throat> play every minute of every game until the end of the season. We know that. The other thing that's not been mentioned, and I've thought about this over the last few minutes, is that, uh, you know, Leif Davis, he likes to get forward a lot. You know, he likes to attack down the left-hand side. You know, he, he puts the crosses in. And mm. from that, that's where he's performed exceptionally well for us this season with the assists and, you know, with the performance-wise. And I, I just feel that if, if you know, if he plays on that left-hand side, maybe in place of either Brody or Harness, I'm going to uh, think that he'll probably rotate those. Mm. Um, he, will he be a bit of a hindrance? Will he check? Will he be kind of preventing Davis from getting forward into that space, that kind doesn't of thing. Doesn't sound like it, does it? With the way no, he I'm so we, 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 I'm saying we don't know exactly what he's getting. I'm saying, will he, will he sort of rotate with Burns? I'm saying, will he play, will he rotate with Chaplin? I can't imagine he'll rotate with Chaplin. 
uh, Chaplin no, you know, seems no, to play no. yeah, many minutes for that. So it's it's one of those. Um, he's, he's obviously the replacement for, for Dane Scala. I think that he's an upgrade on Dane Scala. I really do. You know, he's already got that experience. Yep. I, I think how. anyone's an upgrade on Dave Scott. It's yeah. the biggest fucking waste of time we've done in five years. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's, but interestingly, this is a player out. we were chasing in the summer. So perhaps yeah, yeah, yeah. the Dave Scarlett arrival was a mm. was was a result of losing mm. out on on yeah. him in the summer. You know, and, they, and that's that's a theme here, Phil, isn't it? When yeah. January comes around, we're going back in for players that we went in for in the summer. So clearly, it takes time. It yeah, but clearly time. they're keeping the, yeah. the homework yeah. up to date, as it were. That dashboard is certainly. Well and truly, still got um, everything still ticking over on it. It's not a case of ah, uh, you know, we, we could get you in the summer. We'll look elsewhere. Well, they're still keeping an eye on. You know, George Hurst last year tried to get, couldn't get Nathan Broadhead. I'm sure they mentioned they were looking at tracking for a while. Now this player, so clearly, um, if you're a player and an agent watching this, you probably should when Kieran McKenna calls you in the summer, just make a move then because mm. you're only delaying it by six months and costing yourself well, who knows what. Right, Phil? Yeah. Yeah, I mean say so, yeah, I agree with that. I think I think that he's also I mean say so for me, I I'm going to assume that McKenna, you know, he's obviously the type of player that he loves working with. You know, he's young, he's ambitious, he's got the talent. And I think that um he you know, he should improve his confidence and by that I'm I'm hoping that he's gonna get some some good performances out of him, you know, before the end of the season and that we've got him until then. Let's just hope he stays injury free. Because you know, you never know when, when a new player comes in like that online yeah. and he's and he's mm. had an injury, you think it's a bit of a risk, a bit of a calculated gamble, but you know, in McKenna we trust and uh, you know, I do back him to do well here and uh, you know he does you know, he's probably more suited to the way we play. I think West Brom, you know, West Brom they, they tend to kind of press a lot of midfield, they don't tend to get the ball out wide as much as we do and you know you know him being able to come in and you know threaten have that goal threat would, would suit us better so i'm looking forward to seeing him play I, i'm say i hope that he does very well here scores loads of goals for us and uh yeah i mean say so yeah let's let's hope that he can help win his promotion to the premier league uh, with a top two finish and it's very much, it sounds like a better, a, a different player to the one we've already got occupying our left-hand side. You know, Harness and Broadhead, very similar in their <clears> in their profile in the sense of neither are going to beat you for pace. No, both no. are tricky, technical players. Sarmiento, you know, I've not seen him play, but from what I've, I've heard tonight and what I've, I've seen elsewhere, perhaps he's that different profile, that different type of player <clears> on <off throat> the bench or to start where you need to get at a fullback, where you need to, to make a bit but of space I, for, I, for an I overlap. I think there is part of this purchase, because I think we, he, we're we buying him for a striker we have lined up. <clears throat> because if, okay. if, Hutchinson's on the, if Hutchinson's on the right and he's on the left, and they're both doing the same thing, which is that, that's for a particular kind of striker. My suspicion is tomorrow, the day afterwards, we announce a striker, because okay. I think we've bought this guy for part of a system rather than coming on and scoring individual worldies once every seven games. Like that's, Selena, that's, yeah, that's really good logic, Ben. I hadn't thought of that, but... Um, Next uh, few days, let's see yeah. what he's part of rather than just the Roman kind of... I would of say that there, was, there was one name banded about before um, Friday night's game um, against Queen's Park Rangers, uh, and that was Diallo for Man United. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm saying... It doesn't mean then we won't be getting. To... <laughs> that would be a little bit disappointing if if that turns out to, you know to be so. But uh, no, I'm I'm satisfied that we've got the first player in, and he's he's got something to prove there. And uh, I'm I'm sure that we'll get I, that. I think we've got in. one piece of a four piece puzzle. That's my yeah. I go along with that. I agree with that. that. Yeah. Okay. I like, I like it. I like it. Phil, have you got one more thing for me tonight? Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, say just the one more thing really for me is the fact that um I'm just hoping that Davis's calf strain is not too bad. Oh, and that he God, should yeah. be hopefully, are, yeah. hopefully be back for the Sunderland game. You know, it's another sort of you know, week and a half away. So Ken, McKenna wasn't sure whether he was. It was a sort of a one, two, or three week kind of mm. stint on the sideline. But uh, I don't think he'll be out for long. You know, so he should be back for the Leicester game, hopefully. But yeah, perfect. Phil? I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I think that I think we're bound for top two. We, we're having a wobble. It's not a blip. It's a wobble. But uh, we'll get back to winning way soon. <laughs> Love it. Phil, as always, appreciate your thoughts. Look after yeah, yourself. Man. All the best. We are also obviously heading to AFC Wimbledon in the FA Cup this weekend. Third round. Now, I would, see where I normally would perhaps ask you to give me a 1 to 11, but it's an FA Cup. So there, there could be any number of players. I mean, Sonia Luco could play, uh, other fringe players could play. So instead, I'm going to ask you, Ben, and for those watching at home and on catch up, don't forget FTA, comment for the algorithm. <clears throat> Here's your one of your many opportunities to do so. 
three players you would absolutely leave at home in cotton wool, feet up, beer in hand, watch the television. Don't right. go out of the house unless you absolutely have to. We need you for some of them. Three players you're absolutely not even risking getting on a coach. Where's Burns? With a right. shadow of a doubt for what he does. Um, I think... Who do I value the most in the team? Um, Wolfendom. Because I, okay. I fucking love that guy. I, I, for me, it's a weird thing to say, but he's a player of the season for me. Consistently fucking good most games. And the third you. player, it's a tough one, you know. Maybe it's something like Luongo, because Moore's is going to be out for a couple of games. I don't want two midfielders out. I need someone in there who's been good for the whole season. So for me, I, w- I would put Taylor and maybe, I don't know, who knows who are, who knows don't know Obviously, uh, Morse maybe... is suspended for two games so would you would you is the cup check... game one of them nope oh, fuck. so Sunderland and Leicester he's not he's missing I, I would rest Luongo as well um yeah. because I, I think we, we if he gets injured then all of a sudden we're without our entire midfield uh, and we can't have that happen for these two Very games true. so it's, it's a more of a logic thing than a protecting our best players but it's a part of a system thing so no. very true yeah, so Wolfenden, Luongo and Westbrook. Burns yeah. Perfect. Okay. Those, yeah, three very good shouts there. Um, Wolfenden, you could almost throw in as part of your ap- reason why, with Burgess going off to uh, international duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got Axel, who we're managing game time on anyway. Elkham yeah. Baggett's, I believe, also gone off on international duty. So if Wolfie goes down, yeah, you we're, are we're, we're, we're looking, at a, looking at a, 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 an Edmondson yeah, Axel one week and Edmondson, Harry Clark. And we're, and and bearing in mind, next. With our full power back line, we're leaking an average of two goals a game anyway. So I mm. don't want to see that get any worse in any way. Maybe I could just say three of the back four and have it done. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Neil Faces, Burns, Chaplin and Harness. Uh, James says Chaplin, Burns and Wolfenden, Streaky, Morsi, Hal- Haladki, and Morsi, Haladki and Burns. Harp says Clark, Wolfie and Burns. Connor says Wolfenden, Morsi and Broadhead. Yeah, absolutely. Never risk Nathan Broadhead. M- 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 Morsi, why, why would you want to protect him and wrap him in cotton wool? He's not going to play for two and a half weeks afterwards. I, I agree with that. I, I'm just agreeing with Broadheads from Connor. I, I it's the, only, it's the only football he's gonna get. <laughs> it is for two, yeah. It is for for a fortnight, yeah. I, I yeah. Burns, Wolfenden, and Luongo were three three very good shouts, but I'm with Broadhead. I, I'm with mm-hmm. I'm with okay. Connor here who Fair says enough. Broadhead because yeah. he's my needle mover. And with mm-hmm. uh, George Hurst mm-hmm. going down injured, and without the strikers currently, I know what you've said about how you feel there might be somebody coming in even even this week or whatever. Yeah, it, it's, it's coming. We've got one striker at the club at the moment. And that's not well, Brody is your makeshift number nine, so you you yeah, need, well, you, need yeah. you need him fit. You know, fit just one to, and just, a half. just yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, Haladki Burns and Wolfman says Colin, uh, Burgess were a lad keeper player of the year. He adds on, uh, Walton is definitely, I think Walton is definitely playing. I think we oh, all probably, uh, absolutely yeah. agree with that. Uh, fix yeah. the blue, Wolf Burns and Broadhead, Chaplin, Broadhead, and Luongo says Charlie. Broadhead. People want Broadhead protected for the next two games. That's, that seems to be the worst people. He's the needle mover. And Trevor yeah. says, could play ball. Yeah, this, 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 this is my argument about Wolfenden, particularly you know, adding on to your argument. Mm. If he goes down. You're looking at a ball fridge partnership potentially for Leicester, yeah. for example. Um, like, you know, although fridge, a little, oh, yeah, well, it, fridge, yeah. it's done phenomenally well, but it's a makeshift. Yeah. You know, you you have to look at the, the thing abstractly. You can, you can't say, oh, we could yeah. sign somebody before. Then you don't know that. So heading into yeah. this week, I think yeah. you have to say, I would personally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to rest him. I'm going to just protect him. I know people are going to say you can get injured in training. Yeah. Of course you can. But you can manage training. You can't manage 11 v 11 in a competitive game. You can't say, oh, excuse me, win with the number six. Uh, Can you do you mind tackling? Yeah, do you mind tackling just a little bit less, perhaps? Oh, yeah, no problem, mate. You got next week, Sunderland? Oh, yeah, fine. Fine, No problem. Oh, how did you end up in your arsehole? They're going to say... They're going to say, what? Come on. So, uh, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Anyway, score prediction. Just to round up, Ben. Uh, For Saturday? Yes, please. 2-0. 2-0. Perfect. A little, a little solid 2-0. I think we'll be right defensively. They're not great. And I think we are due a goal or two. So 2-0. Nice and easy. Perfect. Absolutely love that. Don't forget, you can carry the conversation on over on Discord if you are a YouTube member or hit the Ko-Fi link. 4 99 Cancel at any point. Uh, the link will be in your community tab on YouTube or on your, your private messages on Ko-Fi. Once I've received the notification, 
So if you do want to carry the conversation on, come over and join us where I'm sure plenty of chat will be going on all month long about January win Windows signings. But until then, thank you to Chris for joining us from West Brom and his thoughts on Jeremy Sarmiento. Yeah, really interesting. Mm. Thank you to this man here, the Milkshire Man, Ben Adams. Thank you for watching. Hit the like, subscribe, and we'll catch you after the game Saturday for our match reaction. But until then, unless there's a signing like Ben's almost promised us here. Like, coming. It's coming. It's got... I'll see you soon then. You Apologies, one more thing. A 499 super sticker from Sean. Sean, thank you ever so much. I'm terribly sorry uh, I didn't catch that just before I hit the outro button, but thank you. It is incredibly appreciative. Uh, appreciated. Thank you, Sean. And uh, yeah, see you later. You make me smile when I think of you.